Hello, friends. Welcome back to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about fitness influencers who are saying that you cannot boost your metabolism. Is that true? Well, you're going to find out in this episode. You're also going to learn a little bit later in the episode that a little bit of narcissism actually is healthy. Say what? <laughs> That's true. In the second half of this episode, we coach four live callers on questions such as, hey, I think I'm doing all the right things, but my strength has plateaued. What can I do about it? And what should I do if I keep hurting the same body part over and over again? No, God! No, God, please, no, no! Hey, your body's talking to you. We're going to teach you how to listen to it. Finally, if you enjoy the specific coaching that the guys do with callers on this show and only want to watch that content, go over to our other channel, Mind Pump Clips, and subscribe. All right, here comes the show. Look, here's the deal. You can speed up your metabolism. Contrary to some fitness influencers on social media, it's true. You could definitely make your metabolism much faster. Is that, people are saying you can't do that? So, you know, here's what I like, I, what I love and what I don't like, I don't want to say love, what I like and what I don't like about our space is the same thing. And here's what <laughs> well, it cause, is. Because it creates opportunity for us. Totally. <laughs> most fitness influencers. Dumb dumbs. Most people, yeah, they're idiots, like total idiots. Um, they communicate terribly, bad information, and they play this game of counter to try to gain attention. Yeah. And what's happening right now, because um, what's really gone or what's become common knowledge in our, I guess in our space, right? The coaching fitness space is that you can do what's called a reverse diet. You can train a particular way, speed up your metabolism, and then make fat loss or sustainable fat loss much easier. Well, now I'm seeing these people on social media, these, you know, quote unquote fitness influencers. Mm -hmm. And they're saying things like, um, you know, uh, yes, Mrs. Johnson didn't lose weight on 1200 calories. And then we, we had her eat more and then she went back down to 1200 calories and she lost weight. What really happened was she wasn't at 1200 calories to begin with. And then you see comments underneath or whatever. Yeah. And, and uh, this it's annoying because it's not true. Uh, number one. Now, can that possibly be true? Yes. But what's annoying is what they're doing is what they're, they're inferring is that you can't affect right. your metabolism in the positive. Yeah. Now we have very hard data to show that metabolic adaptation happens. In other words, your body can learn to burn less calories if you're in a low calorie environment, if your activity looks a particular way. But for some reason, when the conversation goes around moving in the other direction, the people will say, no, you can't do that. You, you can't make your metabolism faster, which is completely- So their bullshit. answer is just basically that they've miscalculated. Yeah. Like that's, that's what they're amounting uh, the <clears throat> increase- to be towards that's, that's one in like a thousand people yeah i mean i mean that happens sure happens. there's yeah. anomalies like there's, there's there's clients who, no, who just who, they just don't yeah know. Who, yeah there's clients who came to me who's oh i eat this much and then when i actually tracked and we figured it all out it's like no you don't and now you're eating correctly and that's why we're losing weight but that's actually really rare yeah. really really rare. i mean i remember used to when i used to get a client who would tell me like oh you know like openly like out of my you know I eat candy this many times a day. I go to McDonald's this many, like, and they're like, I looked at their calories and I'm like, oh my God, this person's eating 5,000 calories every day. And they're, they're and I'm like, I used to love that. I'd be like, oh, this can be easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tighten their diet up. They're going to drop. What was more common was someone who's just like, I had to make this and this, you know, all day. This is all I eat and I'm struggling with, with weight. And what you know is that a majority of the time they are eating like that. Then they have the one day where they go off the rails, which puts them over the surplus so yeah. bad, which, and then they, but they're just not burning much. Yeah, they're not. Their, their metabolism is extremely slow. And then that person is the person that we had to reverse out. And it took months, sometimes even longer for some people to build that metabolism. But to say that you can't do that is ridiculous. It's, it's silly. It's completely unhelpful. It's totally unhelpful. And to the person who's listening to that, uh, who is struggling, it, you give them no hope. Well, it also feeds into the, the one of the biggest issues I have is the this uh, the you know just cut calories, move more mentality because I think that's a losing battle for most people. Just that's I think that's the trap most people fall into when they decide to get on their fitness kick is they go, oh, I just need to eat way less, move way more. And they just and they don't balance out their macros. They don't try and build strength or build muscle. They that's, literally just try and burn. That's more. like telling somebody who's struggling with their finances, and you go to them, you go, "Oh, you just got to make more and save more." 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're wow. Not saving yeah. enough. You're brilliant. Oh <laughs> yeah. my God. You just solved all yeah. my problems. Yeah. Like it's, it's yes, you got to burn more and you got to eat less. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Duh. But it's way more complicated than that. But here's the deal yeah. with the metabolism part. For, I'll point to the same stu- to one study that I love pointing to because it was well made and it really highlights the the ability of our metabolic rate to adapt. And then we, we'll talk about why we have this incredible ability. There's a study I've quoted this many times. They did it on modern hunter gatherers. Gatherers. These were this is the Hadza tribe of northern Tanzania, and they lived the way humans lived thousands of years ago. So they don't have electronics. They hunt and they gather. So when they hunt, you know, they'll, they'll wound an animal, chase it down, wait till it gets exhausted, carry it back after they, you know, finish the kill. They are far more active than the average person or the average Western couch potato, okay? And scientists went down and they did with really good sophisticated testing, okay? So this wasn't estimates. estimates. This was actually pretty good testing. They tested their metabolic rate and they were at first kind of like blown away because these hunter-gatherers, really didn't burn much more. It was very similar to the average Western couch potato. Right. And so everybody's like, oh Which my God. strange. You'd think like when just that, your average person would think they're burning so many cows because they're so active. That's you right. Do, you do reference this study all the time. I don't know if I've ever asked you, what was the original hypothesis of that? Do you they, know what? Did they like go going in, in right? Like, yeah, going yeah. in was the hypothesis like, oh, these we, we're so inactive in Americans. This uh, Let's go study this tribe that moves all the time. They're going to be burning all these calories. They didn't, yes. They So there's two things. One is leading up to that, there were lots of studies to show that that simply trying to burn more calories is a terrible, and I'm, manually I should say, trying to move more. It does improve your health. So that's, I want to say that first. So for anybody who's you know about to get all up in arms, just moving more. Uh, as long as it's appropriate, it does improve your health. However, it's a terrible weight loss strategy. We've known this for a long time. There's got lots and lots of studies on this that if you don't change your diet and you just go and try and move more, it's a very uh, it's it's a failing approach to weight loss. So we knew that. We also knew that it's probably likely that our bodies learn to burn less calories because as hunter gatherers, calories are actually quite hard to come by. And we take this for granted in modern societies because calories, we've done such a good job. And this is just a pat on the back to uh, modern humanity. We've we've solved some of the biggest problems that have plagued humanity for, for thousands and thousands of years. One of the biggest ones was energy was hard to come by. Yeah. Like you go live in the wilderness and you don't have modern agriculture. So the agricultural revolution doesn't exist. Um, you don't have grocery stores, you don't have that kind of stuff. Go try to find a thousand calories. 1,000 calories. Go try to find it. Yeah. First off, it ain't going to happen with plants. You ain't going to find fields of corn and wheat and you know fruits and vegetables. If you find fruit, you're lucky if you find a few berries. If you find an apple, oh my God, praise God, because you got you got some food for today, but it ain't going to happen for the you know the rest of the month or whatever. Yeah. And and you'd have to kill an animal, which is calorie intensive, challenging, and dangerous. Okay. So we knew leading into that that you know, our bodies probably adapted pretty well because calories are hard to come by. You know, you know that show, um, what's that show? Uh, alone? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say Naked and Afraid. Yeah. Alone. That one too. But, you know, and Alone, they actually send wilderness and survival experts out yeah. in that. They don't take average people because right. they know they yeah, get the rest yeah. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't last very long. <laughs> and they actually send them out with like a couple choices of things that they could take. Oh, yeah. They get, like a, they get like 10 things. They have like a, a bow or a knife and they've got like stuff to cook with. Yeah. And like, the goal is to stay out there for like three months, four months, yeah. five months, right? not live your whole life out there. Yeah. And they find it to be very challenging. Uh, oh, yeah. Most of the people actually have to leave early because they injure themselves because they don't get enough food. So it's really hard. So- so these modern hunter gatherers, they studied them and said, "Oh my God, they don't burn. They burn like similar calories to like you know John, who sits on his couch half the time and works at a desk." Eating Doritos. Yeah. But it makes perfect sense because if we didn't, if our bodies didn't have that ability, we wouldn't have survived. There's no way calories are hard to come by. So our metabolism can adapt. Now here's where here's the rub. Here's where you get the science people or the should I say the people who love to use science to make themselves seem smart mm. and the fitness influencers are really big idiots. I'm talking to most of you out there. Uh, you're, you're mostly stupid. You give out terrible information and then you'll use something that science says to make yourself sound smart when, you know, those of us in the fitness space who really know this stuff, know you're an idiot. What they'll do is they'll get, they'll go, Oh, you know what? A pound of muscle doesn't burn as many calories as they tell you. It burns like an extra 10 calories because they have some study that showed. First off, the metabolism is way more complex than that. It's not as easy as saying one pound of muscle equals this many more calories. 
The truth is with the same lean body mass that you have now. So you take me, change nothing. I have a range of calories my body can burn, okay? I can, my body can decide either to become more or less efficient with calories. And it does this on a day-to-day -day basis. What controls us? What influences us? Uh, sleep, stress, um, you know, how I'm feeding myself, the types of food I'm, I'm feeding myself. My hormone profile can definitely influence this. You could take a man or a woman, artificially change their hormone profile and, and manipulate their metabolism to, to start to look different or whatever. So, and then building muscle on top of that tends to push it. I, should I, let me correct myself. The process of building muscle, sending the signal to build muscle That's and right. feeding yeah. your body appropriately pushes the scale to what's called less efficient calorie management. Yeah, it's the type of environment that you're presenting yeah, it on a daily basis. Completely. So then your body is like, I don't need to store as many calories. Look, if you don't believe me, change nothing, lose sleep for a week, you know, get shitty sleep for a week. Watch what happens. Your body all of a sudden will start storing. Anybody who's more trained, anybody who's trained enough people in their life, you know, and and applied reverse dieting to somebody and it has seen this firsthand. That's so right. it's it's yeah. always somebody who is some online uh, fitness influencer or so trying to be a contrarian and and like you said, get atten gain attention or some other means to yep. to to basically look like they know what they're talking about. I mean, I there's there's a part of me that. You, you know, I understand. I was this trainer. I didn't understand. Um, I thought my clients were lying to me yeah. for the first yeah. five years. I really did. I know. I, I, I thought, I was like, I, I remember having clients sitting across from me that were really, really overweight. And mm -hmm. then they would break down what they eat every day. And I'm like, there's no fucking way. Yeah. You're lying to me. There's no way you're eating that little and you're that overweight. This can't be possible. But to your point, the, the body's an amazing piece of machinery. It, it will adapt to whatever it needs to survive. And if you for a long period of time, give it very, very low calorie, it will slow, it'll become more efficient with those that limited amount of calories that you give it. And so, yeah, if you've trained people for long enough. And by um, the way, that's in combination with zero stimulus that tells your body you need strength and muscle. Right. That's two things. Right. Because you can try to reverse diet, but don't try to also simultaneously build muscle, in which case you'll just gain body fat. Right. right? You're just, you'll get a little bit of a metabolism boost because- when you boost calories or drop calories, your metabolism does still adjust a little bit, but it's not significant. So if you start to slowly reverse your calories, but you don't simultaneously train appropriately to build muscle mm -hmm. and you don't simultaneously feed yourself appropriately, in other words, you know, high protein, adequate nutrients, then yeah, you're not going to see that metabolism boosting effects. But look, I've seen it firsthand. I boost, I will boost people's metabolism on average by 500 calories, but Sometimes much more. I've seen people go up a thousand, twelve hundred calories in a day. I've seen women go from hiring me, eating a thousand calories a day, doing crazy amounts of exercise. And this cardio. argument and only yeah, came after the study that showed the difference between when you when you isolated muscle and fat and what it yeah. requires to maintain. That is when this came out. When it's like oh, ten calories. So people are like, oh, it's insignificant. But to your point, what it takes to build that muscle and also maintain that muscle, you're not factoring that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you build, let's say you build 10 pounds of muscle and you stop lifting weights, you'll it'll atrophy, it'll go away. You'll lose that. So you're not, you're, you're also going to factor in, okay, the, for me to maintain 10 pounds of muscle, I also have to create or send that signal, which is mm -hmm. also utilizing and burning more calories than it just being in my body. So there's more, there's more to it. more to the story. There's more to yeah. it than just that. So, Completely. and then, and then you, if you know enough uh, about what we do is you have to accept that we're still learning too. I mean, the, the metabolism is under the metabolism, the gut, the brain, the universe are like those, some of the most complex fucking things. Yeah. And to think that you're to be so arrogant to be like, oh, we got to figure it out because one study comes out and shows you that, oh, st isolated muscle burns only 10 more this calories. Is the part, this is the part that annoys me the most is that what we do is we completely invalidate thousands and thousands of people's experiences mm -hmm. because we say, no, that's not, that's not the case. It's like when a medication comes out and all these people say, hey, this, this is a side effect that's happening. And then the medical community says, no, 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 no. Our studies don't show that. You're, it's all in your head. Yeah. And then 10 years later, like, Oops. Leaky gut syndrome's a myth. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's, it's half of those things. And, and it's going to, again, like this is where the scientific community, they'll, they'll have something to kind of explain uh, their way out of that. But it's like everybody that has experienced it knows firsthand. It's a real thing. So it's like, what are we, why are we contesting that? Look, look, this is how complex it is, okay? 
you can take, they've done this with animals. They'll take a, a rat, they'll take two rat or two rats or two mice, one that has a quote unquote faster metabolism, one that has a quote unquote slower metabolism. So they feed them the same, same activity. One's fatter than the other one. Okay. And they'll do a fecal transplant mm -hmm. from the thin mouse to the, the more overweight mouse, meaning they take the gut microbiome and temporarily place it into the other of one mouse and put it into the other mouse. And what happens? The obese mouse loses weight. Yeah. From a fecal transplant. Just from that. From the microbiome. Now, is that the answer to everything? No, but I think that highlights. Yeah, what we don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's <laughs> like that. so much more <laughs> complex. Highlights. So this is all, look, you, you talk to coaches and trainers have been doing this for, for 10 years plus, and they're going to look at you in your face when you tell them, no, you can't speed up the metabolism where it's inconsequential, it's insignificant. And they're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? And then this is also annoys me. They'll say there's no data to support what you're saying. Okay, yeah, you're right. There still isn't in studies that really pinpoint what the hell's going on. Yeah. Doesn't mean it ain't happening. Right, right. I remember you brought up leaky gut syndrome. Mm -hmm. I remember, so I was lucky enough to when I was a like a just a pure meathead trainer. What I mean by that is I knew, you know, macros, calories, lifting weights, exercise. I didn't understand wellness. I didn't understand all this other stuff. But I was at least open minded enough to know that there was market value for those types of things. So I had a studio where I would have these practitioners that did stuff that I saw value within the market. I didn't necessarily understand it myself, but I said, hey, clients could see value in this. And I had people that practiced all these different methodologies. And I had a person in there that would do gut testing. She would do gut testing on people. <clears throat> now consider this was, this was uh, let me think, 15 years ago, maybe more. So 15 years ago, if you said food intolerances or you said leaky gut syndrome, the medical community would laugh in mm -hmm. your face, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I actually know this because I had doctor clients who, when they would hear this person say leaky gut syndrome, would look at me and roll their eyes and say, this is so stupid. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, uh, hocus pocus crap. No, pseudoscience. Pseudoscience. pseudoscience yeah. Well, I mean, lo and behold, years later, the scientific community says, oh, uh, intestinal hyperpermeability. It's a real thing. They named it something. <laughs> Just rebranded. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah, totally. Yeah. So it's, it's super annoying. And it, again, it invalidates people's experiences. So if you see a fitness influencer that says, no, you can't eat more calories and speed up your metabolism or whatever. Just understand this. Understand they're just trying to get attention and they're probably idiots. If and you listen to this show, do you think you're still following influencers? Like I that? hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, yeah. Right. Well, hopefully you're not. Well, maybe right. if you're just tuning in, I guess, for yeah. the first time, right? What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode. Maps, power lift. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you won free access to Maps Powerlift. Also, we got a sale going on all month long. Maps Symmetry, 50% off. Maps Strong, 50% off. Both half off only for the month of October. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get started. All right, here comes the show. Yeah. I have something for you guys that I, I want to bring up that I thought was interesting. Doug, pull this up. I don't know if you saw this. Did you guys see the Joe Rogan AI interviews Steve Jobs? I did, and I hear a lot of people talk about Bro, it. Bro, pull, pull it up, Doug. So the following conversation is between Steve Jobs and Joe Rogan, but the whole thing is generated with AI alone. Joe Rogan AI? So, so, okay, so no, he interviewed an AI like uh, generated. He is AI. So both Joe and oh, both. Yeah, are AI. It. So it's an art okay, it's an it, it's an artificially an intelligent conversation that was that was they used algorithms on what Joe would probably ask with Steve Wait a minute, Joe. wait a minute. And they, they didn't had, even they didn't, they didn't even write even, the so script. So they collected no. like all his podcasts and Yes, and just all just, all Steve Jobs. I'm sure the way the the, the algorithms the, predicted like how what, he what would, would respond, be asked, what would be asked. said and everything like that. Yes. I haven't had a chance to sit down and like listen to the whole what thing a but trip. just okay, how, think about that for a second. That's kind of wild that we could get to a place like that what? where like I it, would that make like Joe replaceable? Like I if mean, it's if it's pretty damn close and, and accurate, like, 
And who's the well, stop? Well, this goes to like, who's it? Bruce Willis or who's been the first actor to basically sell um, his likeness? Yeah, sell his likeness. So I heard that was I heard we, we talked about it, but then I heard it I actually heard debunked. That, yeah, okay. I heard I heard he came out and said that was. Well, did I mean, you hear that? Well, did you, gonna happen. I heard yeah, that exactly. Too. This yeah. it's maybe it's premature, but like this is this is right, definitely a conversation. Well, we that's speculated about this a, a, a while back. Yeah. Right. I don't remember how long ago it was. I when, think I think yes, he'll be replaceable, but not because uh, there's going to be something that looks and acts like him. That's perfect. I think AI will get to the point, I don't know when, to where it's so good, people will prefer to listen to that than to a person. Because it'll hack into how to communicate, what mm. to say, what people like, what they don't like, um, the right answers, not making you know mistakes or gaffes or annoying or irritating people, or how to polarize people. Uh. Like It'll figure that out to the point where you'll want to watch the AI interviewer, or you'll want to watch the AI politician or the AI, you know, character over a real person just because it, look, let me put it this way. It, it's, it's years ago, decades ago, computers started defeating chess grandmasters. <laughs> I know. To the point where up until a certain point, you know, the computers couldn't beat chess grandmasters. And then they got to the point where they beat them. And now it's to the point where chess grandmasters don't even try. Like they, there's no way you'll beat an AI uh, chess machine. There's no way. It's just, they're so good. That they're not even they don't even talk about competition. At some point, it's going to get like that with other things. Yeah, at some point. I mean, like how long though? Like I, I feel like that's probably a ways off. Well, like, and then does do you have your do you have the rights to your likeness? Like how like what's what's to stop somebody else for like what's to stop somebody? We have enough content out there between books and white papers yeah. and blogs and right. conversations that you could take what is to stop someone from making their own version you know just three other assholes to having this conversation <laughs> and they interview people yeah. right but they use they use the uh, the algorithm that or that's based off of how we communicate to build a mere show that doesn't take work and time that could be done by ai so like you could potentially scale at a at a faster rate for way less money They'll because beat us. You get right. They would win. Yeah. I mean, that's like, so how, and how do you, how do I, how do we protect ourselves from, from that? Like, what are the, like, you don't, do we but, have rights around that? Like we don't, we have, well, they wouldn't be able to beat us. Cause I think we would be able to, to, to sue for that, yeah, but exactly. they would be better than us. I, what's the lawsuit though? Well, copyright infringement. Copyright. Well, I, it's huh? Likeness. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be ways that you can um, legally sort of wrap. I mean, like, like, like your, what's, what's the stop even like, like being smart about it and not naming it anything like us or using our names. Well, that's or the thing that. I'm saying. But, but literally ripping our our brains, how we think, putting it into an algorithm and building it. I mean, it could be three chicks. Doesn't right. matter, right? Yeah. But it, the, the way we talk, way we think, the way we communicate. Well, that would be the way around it. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd want to be the hot one. <laughs> so, that's not <laughs> so like if that it. happens. Look at Justin, bro. Huh? Justin's <laughs> for sure going to be the fuck, the one with the ass and a little beady waist. I'm the sultry one. <laughs> yeah, right? be the, I'd be the sultry he one for yeah, sure. Yeah, will be the one. Adam would be like the super you fake. Know, I'll be yeah, fake, yeah. fake tits. Oh, fake exactly. <laughs> fake, fake everything. Big old big old eyelashes. I'd be the you know contacts with that are perfect. You know when you yeah. watch movies and they always show the nerdy girl? Yeah, I really see your Thelma. With glasses. He's Thelma. Yeah. You know, oh, like uh, all into weird, freaky, kinky shit. Whoa, whoa calm down. <laughs> Don't be adding that. All hippie shit though doesn't doesn't fucking put deodorant. Oh on Oh my god, yeah. what's going yeah, on here? For sure. No, you know what? Okay, so small percentage of people think it's really hot. That's not, <laughs> what a dick. What a dick. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a little like chat room. I mean, it's kind of accurate, dude. It's kind of accurate. So how it goes. Small percentage of people. Think. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't make yeah. don't don't stoke my ego. Yeah. No, you know what it is. I, I here's what I think. I think that they're not going to copy anybody. They're going to create new characters that are going to be better. Well, they're okay. going to tap into that's, human that, psyche. That's my better. point. Is that they they what is to stop them from utilizing all of our written and 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 uh, audio content? To basically formulate a better well, version. Well, of it. so okay, th they've already kind of tried this with like movie scripts, right? You've seen yeah. that, the, the and it's just a disaster. Yeah, no, like it's right clunky now, right now. It's hilariously bad. Okay, um, but again, to like if you if you move this out, like say ten to twenty years Correct. or so, um, I guarantee that it's going well, to start having some. In fact, kind of well, you also also understand too that 
movies and art are, will be the I think the last something like this as much as I want to believe we're super artistic mm -hmm. and, and yeah that, but you don't think a, a conversation is an art no he's right Justin's right 100% conversation is going to be really hard it's, gonna, it's so clunky right now with yeah. machines okay, there's so, no way it's going to well were you guys like, replace it did you, were you currently. seeing with the joke yeah, I, I mean it's not that it's not that bad no, there, so, there's, so there's two parts one when they first when they did the first computers <laughs> that beat chess grandmasters what they did is the computers learned from moves that actual human chess grandmasters would make, then would make calculations based off of odds, and then that's how it would win. Right. Today's computers that play chess don't do that. They actually get creative. Set traps. They, they set get traps. creative. They set traps. Yeah. This is why there was that one chess player that they think cheated. cheated right, right. Yeah. Because what they do to test to see if you cheated is they compare your moves to what an AI machine would make. And the best chess grandmaster, I think, would seventy percent. Like, yes, yes. The best. It's because they do like really risky things, like immediately. Well, they, they do sacrifices that no human would ever do. Yeah, they wouldn't yeah. think to and, do that. And because where he's going is that like ahead. so the closest yeah. anyone's ever been. It's actually Bobby Fischer. Yes, Bobby Fischer's moves were seventy-two or seventy percent accurate to what the the, the most sophisticated AI machine. AI machine would have made. And this guy that so they anything think is cheating that, is like a hundred percent. Well, so yeah, they're they're like, it was oh, higher now. It was like not or not that high. It was like ninety Almost something. 100%. Yeah, right. It was high, it was so high that it was like it set off all these all these flags. Like there's mm, no way yeah. nobody in history has ever been that close. But the and by the way that ha it still hasn't been. They haven't caught him. That's how they're proving that he did it. Well, they have not. They have not actually caught him to do it. Which here's what I would argue: hmm. he's a he's a young kid who has grew up playing, playing that. So he's he's mapped sort okay, of the way AI hold on. does it. Let me put this and in his you, brain. Let me put this in our talk. Let me put this in our talk for a second. Okay. So in the what's, what's, I thought about this. Like? Like? No, 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 no. You know why? Because I. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. <laughs> My name's Adam. <laughs> no, 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 no. Booga booga. Okay, no, no, go ahead. No, no, no. Because I was I listened to a podcast where they talked about all this. Yes, and I was yes. trying to trying to wrap my brain around it. It's like this. It's like somebody whose max deadlift is three hundred pounds, and then a year later they're deadlifting a thousand pounds. We would all, all of us would know, and they already trained their ass off. To so get I don't. I don't know. All I of us would be like, okay, that's not. That's not possible. There's obviously something going on. That's that's the equivalent. I mean, comparing the the the, the physiological ability to, no, uh, to get that smart, you mean in, in relation <laughs> to building that much. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I take that analogy because I I, I think that in the chess it, world it's like that. Well, it, yeah, I get what you're comparing, but I think if a kid has been playing against um, right, but he played before too, and he went from here to here. In a period of time where they're like, okay, this is not even this is not even humanly possible. Anyway, hmm, yeah, my my but, point my point with all that is <sighs> that here's what I think. I think it's gonna be very interesting when AI machines get to the point where they're creative, they outcompete us in creativity. Because already they're mm -hmm. getting close to where you can write a script, feed it to a uh, AI machine, and it'll generate your movie for you. Yeah, it'll generate the scene for you. Also with art. To yep. like, there you, you can like describe based off of what type of uh, like, like say there's a, a distinctive character, but you want him in a certain location, and and then you you basically just tell it to 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 go through the yep. entire internet and find images, and it like <clears throat> smashes them all together, and it creates like this image or painting based off of what you're typing so, in, and is weird. So what's gonna happen when we find when we get to that point, where we create these really smart AI characters. And the AI characters come up with solutions for our big problems. Are humans going to accept the solutions? Like, what if an AI machine comes out and says, well, here's a deal uh, with climate change. Here's what we really need to do. Mm. We need to build nuclear reactors everywhere. And they'll be like, but no, yeah. well, I don't agree with that. And it's like, no, here's the data. Here's what's going to happen. Like, are we going to accept yeah. The are advice that they give us, or are we still going to push Eventually, are we more likely to listen to machines or humans? Uh, that's right. Because like, look how fallible our our leaders are yeah. right now. Like, look how much like they've done in, in terms of like people, um, you know, losing faith in terms of like our um, our, our people in positions of power versus like say now machines come in and they have better answers. And do machines actually understand? Humanity. There's that one question with self-driving cars, which is you're in a car and it's driving you and it has the option. It has to, to make a decision. It has to either run the dog over or hit like. Any, no, no. Any, like, like it's going to hit like four kids crossing the street that's what I'm saying. or, or, or dr drives off the cliff and kills you. Right. 
Like, does it calculate? Well, there's four children. You're a forty something year old man. Yeah. Four children more valuable. <laughs> yeah. Where, like, <laughs> like yeah. fucked, right? Oh, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. like that movie with Will Smith, where all the robots are like, to protect you all, we're gonna lock you in your room. Yeah. And, and, and you're keep you actually the problem. Yeah. And we're just gonna yeah. give you everything you need. Or when humans are like, no, no, that's not how we want to live. You know. So it's gonna be really interesting what that looks like. But as far as like. What are people going to do? I mean, shit, we may get to a point where we don't have to work anymore. I know. Do you think we'll see that in our lifetime? Probably not Doug's, but ours. What do you think? Do you think that was possible? <laughs> I don't know. Doug's an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a Doug, while since I did an old joke. You Doug's going to have a robot like was, body, dude. He's going he's gonna to keep he will, going. We, you know what's good? We've all been together now for almost eight years. I predict, okay, here's a prediction for us that we always like to call stuff. Uh, by year 12, people will think Doug's the youngest of the <laughs> Yeah, it's already happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what the hell's going it's on It's slowly here? happening like that. Like, it was clear when we first started. I was like, I felt like we looked the youngest, and then it's like- I'd the, love the to see like, a tip. simulation of that with yeah, our faces just like yeah. aging. Doug and getting Doug's younger, we're not, getting older. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's right now, he's, <laughs> he's sucking the youth People are going to be us. like, real soon here, people are like, Who's, where'd you guys find that young producer you guys got? <laughs> hey, at our funerals, he's just, <laughs> Doug's going to give a speech and be like, you know, they used to joke about my age all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck those guys. It's really sad that I'm here and they're not because yeah. you know, they were younger than me, but you know, anyway. <laughs> anyway, anyway no, it'll, you, it'll be interesting. Oh, do, you think it, do you think in our, our lifetime we're going to get to that place where, the, you know, AI robots are handling a, a, a large portion yeah. of labor? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because wow. let's think if, if, we, if we live, I mean, if we live another 40 years, that's yeah. four decades. Things are accelerating so fast. Four decades it's today is like everywhere. 200 years before. Yeah, I mean, we're using it for all kinds of predictive, um, like in terms of crime, in terms of like preventing disasters, like we're relying a lot on a lot of these algorithms and things to kind of predict that for us. Yeah, so it's it, just inevitable. How unhappy, we're gonna be so unhappy. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. You're, it's dude, crazy to think that, right? You're right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get everything that we think we need, and everyone's gonna be figure, can't figure out why the hell we're so upset and sad and anxious. Yeah, like what the hell's going it's like on? There's what no, we, yeah, we have no purpose at some point. Yeah, right? could you? There, that's funny. I was watching a Rick and Morty episode like that where everything was done for. Oh, there were dinosaurs, so dinosaurs came back down to Earth, and apparently there's super hyper intelligent, super evolved beings, and they just want to solve. We just want to solve your problems. And the humans are like, all right, cool. And then they solve everybody's problems. And then they're all sitting around the kitchen table and getting hammered and just like, ah, what do I do? Is I can only so much like painting I can do. Like I need to feel like I, I'm, I'm adding something to society. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I, funny, I, but it's like, you're, you're the yeah. story you, I mean, we used to share it on the podcast all the time. It's for your stellar time. travel, dude. Your, your twilight zone episode, I think is yeah. like one of the most like epic, like, I mean, th to have the foresight to, to make a show like that, like when was that show done? Like in. When's, when's 1950s on? and 60s? Yeah, yeah. that's that's wild to, to be yeah, thinking. Actually, right ahead of humans have, have understood this for a long time. Religion has yeah. taught this for ancient practices have taught this for thousands of years. Um, and data data shows us in order for us to be happy, we have to have struggle, we have to have challenge. Yep. So that's the so, and we always try to get rid of struggle and challenge out of our lives, thinking that's going to make us feel better. Yeah, we can't even yeah, uh, pick our own movies problems. to watch now. Do you see the new feature on Netflix? This is just throw up. What no, you, it does, I mean it's kind of cool, but it's just like God, if you're 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 too lazy to even scroll and find something now, now it recommends based off of your algorithm. Uh, so like when you first is that the surprise me um, yes option yeah yeah, yeah it did, like randomly we'll uh, we'll we'll you what know. does it say, what does it say for you. Uh, I actually didn't even do it because I knew what I wanted to watch. We I should think. do that and compare notes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. you know, so the, so the, the, one, the flaw in mine, and, and maybe I don't know how you guys are at your house, but like Katrina and I are not consistent with like, oh, I'm picking the movie, so I'm going to go in my yeah. thing. Uh, so so when ran up. yeah, so ran it like, you know, like, I mean, and we have the, the, the properties that we have together yeah. that, you know, I'm like, I why do I got scary movies? I forgot to, to log me? out. Fucking it. Justin. You know <laughs> <laughs> We're like ancient, ancient, you know, <laughs> shit like that. I was like, did I watch not... ancient aliens? Yeah. If it's aliens, scary and freaking conspiracy theories i know justin's been up a truckie dude that's <laughs> yeah. why fucking my netflix is off man hey, like it, it's you know it helps me sleep hey speaking of uh our our property stuff uh how's the the one in utah coming along oh my god i just want it to be done i just want it to be done we're so we're uh, a couple things well first you paint the context what we're trying to do out there from yeah oh i think most of the audience knows if you don't i mean we're we're doing our first short-term uh rental so and this is going to be like a you know luxury slash biohacking slash experience right so it's going to have uh sauna steam infrared jacuzzi or infrared sauna uh well, cold the, dip. the cold dip juve lights prx setup 
um, movie theaters, uh, uh, jacuzzi outside. And then the last thing I'm actually dealing with today is I got to uh, get on with them. Um, and it's so bad. I, I got to practice not saying chili anymore. They're at Sleep Me is the name. Sleep, sleep Me is me. a new company. Yeah. A new so the Sleep Me mattress pad. So I'm, I'm getting them for all the bedrooms. So you have those in Are there. Are you getting them dual? All of them dual? Uh, no, I'm only going to do the two. So we have two kings. And a, and a queen. I think I'm going to do the two kings, the duel. Well, we'll see because I have to negotiate this, right? So uh, obviously I want the be the the duels for all of them if I can, even though the queen I'll probably do a single, but the at least the two kings. But those are, I mean, those ones are, you know, they're expensive to have the dual ones. So yeah. I know that if I, I hope that they'll, they'll hook that up. If they do, I will. Bottom, for sure, every, every bed will have the controlled temperature. So the idea there. is you go, you rent this property <clears throat> and you have, you can work out, you can do sauna, you could do, you know, cold dip, you could have this sleep experience, red light therapy. Um, you, you basically you could go there and do all the stuff that we talk about, you know, you I get this experience. I talked to like, I hung out with Mike last night. He's in town. Right. So, um, we, I was sharing with him this, this venture and it, it was interesting. He actually, right. Well, he got excited about like, dude, this is, he goes, I think it's brilliant. And it would, I'd be very oh, interested. That's nice to hear from him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he'll he, be the I, first one to tell you something stupid. Well, that, yeah, <laughs> that's no. Mike Matthews, by the way. Yeah. So people know who oh, Mike is. Sorry. Sorry. Um, that but anyways, Mike. his his suggestion was really in line with what you had said off air before when we were talking about it, of like that we kind of pack it, do like these packages where it's like the three day you yes. know detached like experience retreats. or the yes. the seven day kickstart your wellness thing or the thirty day change your life and kick off yes. and like and so there's we like include workout yeah we include stuff. like and basically a protocol you know do the dip. First, then do this, yes. then do that, yes. then go for a walk, then and like literally map out Outline for people it, yeah. and make like this whole experience around it. Now, I think uh, obviously that'll be a little more work for us to do that, but I think he's right that that would be amazing for our audience. I think most people will really enjoy that. But I don't also want to like I also want people to have that option of like I don't want to. I just want to. You don't have to. You can just yeah, I, or experience like experience it for because selfishly that's how yeah. I want to use it. I don't want to leave work and like do work stuff for me. You know what I'm saying? I want to be like, oh, maybe I'll jacuzzi every day and that's all and watch movies. That's all I'll do. Or yeah. maybe I am going to go there and cold plunge and sauna and work out. You want the flexibility. Yeah. I don't want to feel like, you know, I have to do this regimen. So I think having that as an option, and I told him the idea of like having, you know, this iPod, uh, iPod, iPad uh, tutorial, like that you yeah, are like yeah. basically walking people through all the stuff and how to use it properly and what it's for. And well, think about like more and more people are needing breaks so they can go feel healthier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a break from life mm -hmm. so I can go somewhere and improve my health, improve my sleep, make myself feel good, which people enjoy. People enjoy doing that. Then I can go back to my regular you know, if, if we or, can keep this thing really, if we can keep this thing filled up, we can be competitive with it, which is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. I really want to be able to keep the occupancy uh, year round and actually be able to be competitive with like just like a neighbor, which mm -hmm. is, you know, like, why would you stay at the house next to ours uh, for re relatively the same price or close to? And we have all of this that you have access to. I mean, you're talking about close to a quarter million dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. that will be in these houses. So I think, and and if you ever thought about trying any of those things, I think that there's going to be a huge pool. I hope, I mean, that's the plan for this. The plan is that, you know, and that will attract people even in, you know, the quote unquote down months in these areas, right? So obviously during ski season in Park City, uh, this thing is going to fly like crazy. It'll be booked. Mm -hmm. But then they have slow months when it's just, you know, it's beautiful out in Utah, but it's not, it's, it's near a ski town. So there's not skiing going on. And so when it's slower, I'm hoping that that's we're going to be able to keep these places filled up. If we can prove this model, then this is going to be a direction that we're going to move into. And what I was talking to Mike last night <clears throat> was um, if we prove it, then I could see us partnering up with like one or two of our friends. Not necessarily because we need it, but we can go bigger and faster with partners mm. like helping us finance it and move it quicker. Dude, so speaking of trying new things, um, I love it when I, I get my paradigm shifted a little bit or when I thought something about something and then I find data and experience something completely different. So mm. let me paint the picture here. So I don't know what I did last, not last week. I think it was, I did some high polls 
And I decided to go uh, relatively heavy for me. I say heavy because um, it, I don't do this exercise regularly. So I went up to like 225 and I did a few reps here oh and God, there. Snatch grip. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's heavy. And I did, you know, snatch grip. <laughs> and and then I kind of felt on my right wrist, right here in the top, um, like a little bit of a strain. But I mm. felt that before and it wasn't a big deal. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Anyway, yesterday I did my normal workout and I still kind of felt it a little bit. And I was like, oh, that's kind of whatever. Go to bed and it woke me up in the middle of the night, throbbing, which never happens. It's like tons and tons of pain. Now, so now that I've painted the context, okay, so CBD or cannabinoids have this kind of anti-pain, anti-inflammatory effect. And I've seen products before with CBD that you, or cannabinoids that you rub onto your skin for the pain. And I've always thought that was stupid. I'm like, it's systemic. Like how do, how can rubbing it on a specific area, it's not even to go deep enough. Yeah. Like how's that going to work or whatever? Well, and, and our, one of our partners, Ned has a topical relief cream and I never talked about it cause I never tried it because I was always skeptical about how that would work. But anyway, I'm in pain. I'm desperate. Like what the hell? So I rub it on and it, I can, I, I feel a difference. And I'm like, is this placebo? Like what's going on? Am I really noticing different? Looked up some data and some studies I didn't know this. this is bad on me. They definitely have studied topical um, cannabinoid treatments, and they definitely <coughs> have shown to be efficacious hmm. in many cases. So what, don't know what's happening. Okay, so yeah, okay, so you're not gonna be able to maybe answer. What I, I could speculate. So when I when I, when I was in the when we were, when I had the clubs and we had uh, the cannabis clubs, uh, they they had a lot of versions of this. And um, I did think they were pretty much bullshit. Like we, I actually passed a lot on a lot of vendors <clears throat> that would, and I had them, I had them all around my house all the time and yeah. I'd be messing with them, trying them like, and I really didn't, but they had like alcohol based ones. Like there yeah. was a lot of different ones that I had tried out and it ne I was never sold on it. And what I thought was the same thing is like, there's no way this is penetrating all the way into my, like my bone. Right. And then actually giving me relief right. there. I thought, oh, you know, what's probably happening. This is like icy hot. Where it's like, I feel something there. And so my brain says, relax or calm down. Something more related to that. It's really not doing anything. Well, th well, I think that's exactly what's happening. Uh, okay. But what's ha I th so to, to put it differently, the, the way you perceive pain is a big part of pain. Big, big part of pain. So pain is very complicated. Talk to any doctor <clears throat> who uh, treats people for pain. It's one of the most complex things because you have the physiological thing that's happening that they can kind of measure. Like, okay, we can see what's happening here. We see with the chemicals that are being released. We know what happens in the brain. But then there's this perception or this experience of pain. So this is why somebody who's been working out for a long time will experience the pain of exercise differently than somebody who's a beginner. They, they have the same physiological thing that's happening. In fact, they have the same, if not, they're not, if not more pain than a beginner, but they don't perceive it as uncomfortable because they've built this different relationship. And this is why some people, you know, they think are, you know, they, they're they more or less, you have people like, oh, I'm more sensitive to pain or less sensitive to pain or, the, or certain types of pain. For example, like men and women experience pain differently. There's been studies done on this. So I think what's happening is something to do with the cannabinoids, the local cannabinoids in the skin that are changing the way that your brain receives the pain signal. Uh, so, so very similar to like an icy hot correct, kind of experience. Correct. So then if that's their case, why not combine like the full spectrum hemp with like Absolutely. an icy? Oh, okay. Absolutely. Because okay. when you take it internally, you get this systemic anti-inflammatory effect that we can measure physiologically. Okay. But then you also have this topical, you know, within five to 10 minutes, you're feeling this pain relief. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't know if it, if the topical speeds up healing aside from maybe you move differently because you're not as limited. And so that increased motion might help speed up recovery or whatever we could speculate, but you definitely experience less pain. So it's weird. I rubbed it on. So most likely that's what's going on here. It's not, that's it doesn't my have theory. these healing properties that are going to heal it. It's what it is, is going to dull the pain. And so to give you temporary relief Correct. in combination with taking something else Correct. or rehabbing. Now, it. could it speed up healing in this sense? <clears throat> like um, I need to do mobility on my hip but my hip is stiff and sore and it's really hard to get through certain movements here. Let me rub this relief, you know, this CBD relief, relief cream on it. Now I can do the movements that I know are going to help me out. So that, yeah. that in that case, it could help out. Help it's with so people. interesting with pain like that, like interrupting the signal. Cause even with like tape, I found that like, in certain instances that does help. Like, yeah. And it's like, if I could just kind of take a little bit of the, um, the, the stress of the force, you know, away from that initial, um, 
uh, response from that muscle. It's like it, it, it does provide enough to be able to now work through those movements and then start the recovery process. You're 100 percent right. So you're talking about the what do they call it? Physio tape. Physio tape. Yeah, yeah I've so been the, using it with athletes. Yeah, still. there's legit taping where like my wrist hurts and I tape it to the point where it's stiff. So now I've got like a almost like a support around my wrist uh-huh. or wrist. But that's not how physio tape works. They'll actually you'll see people have tape down their back, on the sides of their shoulders. So it's not supportive, but what it does is it gives an outside sort signal. Of redirects it. Correct. So yeah. it gives an outside signal that gets your body to move a little bit differently, which then gets you to maybe experience less pain. Plus that could also interrupt kind of like acupuncture. People want to know how does acupuncture work? Well, these little needles are changing the pain, the way you experience pain through the, maybe the signaling process, right? Totally off topic. But did you guys see, um, the news with Kanye? Yeah. He's going to buy parlor. Oh, parlor. So, okay. So what do you think about that? I think that's really interesting. So he came out and said, because he, because Instagram and Twitter, like, you know, uh, you know, regulated him or put him in, you know, Instagram jail for whatever time. Like that was what, that's when, you know, you're so, you're so rich. Like you get mad at like, (laughs) you get mad at social media. I'm going to go buy a competitor just because I can. So supposedly that's why he's making the move. Now, uh, I'm less excited about that than Elon and Twitter. No, no offense to ye, but uh, <laughs> you know, if it was, you, a, if, you almost sounded if medieval. He, if he was, <laughs> I mean, if he was ye. buying Nike, I'd be excited. If, if he's because right, the guy is an, a, a, a brilliant artist, and he's uh, he's definitely uh, you know got cutting edge you know fashion in that that direction. So if he's buying a, a company like that. I'd be okay. This is going to be interesting. Let's see what he does with it. Like mm-hmm. that—that's interesting to me. Like his his own line or something like that with clothing or something to do with records and music. Yeah, like that's right. interesting. But uh, social media. I mean, to me, like get excited about Elon is you know Elon is such a brilliant business builder mm-hmm. that him going and buying that is exciting. Like, oh, what's he going to well, do? Dude, hey, don't not Kanye. Kanye's built some crazy businesses. He has, but mostly related to what I just said, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, <clears throat> yes, yes. You know what this does for me is it makes me uh, excited about the future of social media. It's finally becoming competitive mm-hmm. in a in a better way. Maybe. Right now, it seems maybe. like it, it hasn't happened right. yet, so that's still a big that's a big maybe. Yeah. Stuff. And what it, happened with because wasn't Trump starting his own Trump social? social? That's yeah. Right. yeah. Like, yeah. did that just completely disintegrate yeah. or what? Like, I don't know. It's uh, truth. Uh, oh, truth. Right. Trump right. social. I said Trump social. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Let's be honest. He wanted to name it that. I'm yeah, sure. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do you guys think that Kanye's uh, crazy? Do you I think don't. he's actually crazy? No, I don't. I mean, no. yeah, any like super eccentric artist, you know, you, you could label as crazy, right? Like he's like way out there in terms of like his ideas. You know but- what? I So here's what I agree. I think, I don't agree with everything he says. So I want to say that. Yeah. I think. Just like I don't, anybody else. But I don't think he's crazy. I think no, they're I painting crazy. him as crazy. Of course they are. Course. Because some of the stuff he says is so controversial. Yeah. And that's the game. The game is, the if thing. they don't like what you say, they'll either make you- a white supremacist, or they'll say you're, I don't know, a masochist. He makes you think, yeah. and so therefore, and if it's a way that you don't want to think, then you want to label him as as crazy and 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 you know, like basically devalue anything he has to say. Yeah, I mean, he says some stuff again that I don't disagree with, but I, I mean, I'm not saying I agree with. Him. I, I'm I don't just think saying he's crazy. that's what you know. That's what they. Do. I think. I think what's what's happening is both, <clears throat> you know, left and right have been. I mean, even I was listening to. I mean, I can't believe that he's. I, what I, he's brilliant when it comes to, uh, you know, he's lyrically one of the most talented rappers that we we've ever seen, and so he can he can talk about really nuanced, cool things yeah. uh, on a song, and I think he's great at that. I think what has happened is he's been you know drug into this you know, political sphere, mm-hmm. and really has no business in there. I really don't think yeah. that. I mean, he's not meant to be a politician and you have both right you know what's his name tucker carlson had him on the other night and i and they literally take him and they interview him for an you know an hour or whatever it is and then they 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 chop it up to fit their narrative to to, you know i'm saying as best they possibly can because if you let it listen probably the whole thing free you'd be like this is awful or all over the place like when he had the run with joe rogan i don't know if you guys listened to the joe rogan one but it was just like you know, there's like snippets of like, oh yeah, I I agree with that or that right. makes sense. But then it, he goes, you know, what he like sounded moments. To, you, you know, know what he sounded like, to oh, me? That made sense. He sounded to me like someone you ever know. I mean, there's lots of people like this where they get nervous, and when they get nervous and anxious, they just go 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 yes. go and talk yes. talk talk. 
That's what it sounded yes, like. Yes, I agree. Yeah. That's why he has no business getting into like the the political conversations because it's and it's not that I don't agree with some of the things and thoughts that he has. Like I do, mm -hmm. there's stuff that he says. I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't totally disagree with that. Let me ask you guys this: Would you rather have somebody be brutally honest, but you don't like what they have to say half the time? Uh, yes. Or have somebody yep. lie sweetly to you? And make no, you feel of course. definitely brutally honest. No. Isn't it? You know what's funny? Most people. Most would, people want the other. Most people say what we're saying. But most people actually don't want that. Yeah. What do they you, would prefer is to be lied to. You want to be yeah. soothed into lies. Media proves it. P popular media proves it. People don't want to be told. They don't want people to say stuff that they don't agree with. Well, I think, that, totally I think those honest. are two different things. I think people. Uh, I think people get on their 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 ideology, and then they don't want that disruptive. But I still think that, generally speaking, people would rather have the brutal truth than to be lied. Those sweet are unpopular people, bro. Yeah, people who are super honest, those are the people that a lot of people are like. Oh God, that guy over there. Oh, that girl over well, there. Or you know, if they don't like it, they'll try and find somebody's argument that will devalue that brutal, honest truth. Right. So it's like, oh well, they're logically creating an argument to counter that. So I'm going to go in this direction. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think on the surface, logically, yeah, we would prefer somebody to be honest so we know what we're dealing with, but in action. No, people don't like that. People want to. They want to be told sweet lies. Well, people want their their bias confirmed. Totally. Yes. You know what I'm saying. So that 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 is true. But I think, again, general speaking, generally speaking, I think that if someone's being, uh, you know, spoken to, that they would prefer the radical honesty, even if it hurts. Or that's what they say, bro. But think about it. like somebody who wants to get in shape. What would they rather hear? Hey, man, it's mostly your fault. <laughs> or would they rather hear me say, it's not your fault at all. It's everybody yeah, else's fault. It's fault. It's your genetics. Yeah. Here's a pill. Take this. This will solve it for you. Like what would like what would be easier to sell? The personal responsibility. Nobody wants to hear it. No, about it's that. it's it's the truth. Everybody's like, I love honesty. No, you don't. You want people to make you feel good with their mm. lies. That's the truth. So somebody like Kanye, who I don't think the guy lies at all uh, to his fault. I think he says everything that's on his mind, which which is why he gets on a lot of people's nerves and why people call him crazy and yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think he's telling exactly what he feels. I don't think he has. I don't think he knows how to <laughs> how to tell people comfortable lies. Yeah. But look what they they destroy him. They I take mean, him out. He might have been a better president than Trump or Biden. That's for sure. <laughs> oh my god! I don't want Kanye yeah. to be the president. I mean, I don't either. But I mean, like, uh, come on, really? I, I don't know. I don't know if we. I don't know if we'd be going to war right now. I don't know if we would have been so divided like we were with Trump. Like, I don't know, Kanye would have divided Kanye. the shit out of everybody. <laughs> oh so, my god! No, I think so. I think you feel that way now we because of sick album because of though. how the right <laughs> yeah, the right is using him now. They're totally using him yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? So he's he's turned into a political pawn now. But I think if you actually just kind of left the guy alone and let him let him have his crazy ideas and stuff like that, we would you know it wouldn't be that. Well, the it wouldn't right, be as bad as it is right now. The left, was the last you know why the left hates years. the left hates him because he doesn't follow their narrative and he's black. That's a fact. Because yeah. he's black, yeah. he says certain things and they can't necessarily call him. They use their favorite weapon, which is your racist. The right likes him. Because he says some well, stuff yeah, that they I mean, like, if, and if, also because if black. him and Candace Owens were white, there's no way they're getting away with the T-shirt that they That's wore. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, they, yeah. You get crucified for that. That's for right. Sure. Although, although Candace Owens is uh, on a different level, she says a lot of stuff that pisses people off too. But she's she's really sharp with how some of the shit. Whether you agree with her or not, yeah. you don't want to tangle with her in a, on a stage in debate. She'll, yeah, she'll I, I, I think the part that I think that is um, unfortunate for Kanye is I don't. I don't. I, mean, I think he's been smelling his own farts for so long that he doesn't realize how much he's being used. Mm -hmm. Like that. It's that's the, the part that's sad. Like you, you know, yeah. There's things that maybe I agree and disagree with him. That that's beside the point. With the reality that this everybody guy, on every side is like, let's use this guy. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's and I think that's and that's what's sad about the right and the left. I think they see a pawn like that and they're like, this dude has so much influence. Let's you use them, and it's mm -hmm. it's unfortunate, and and unfortunately, it's making him look crazy, bad, all these things, and he's going to get all this hate, and it's like, and and I think he thinks he's making this like huge impact or has potential to even become the president, right? So that's the crazy part for sure. Which I think you have to, if you're that level of an artist and billionaire, you have to have some level of narcissism and belief in yourself. Yeah. So it isn't that far fetched well, that's for him a fact. to think I mean, that he yeah. is that way. Yeah, that's it a proved fact, itself right? when he got like millions of people buying yeah, yeah. his records. Well no, that's a know? that's a that's a psychological fact. People who speak in front of crowds, leaders, entrepreneurs have a higher level of narcissism than people that don't because that's scary shit. And so in order for you to do scary shit, you have to kind of think 
you can do what other people can't do. So, and we know this. Remember, we talked to the yeah. the psychology expert, and she, you know, she rated us and whatever. Yeah. And she said, no, no, narcissism. There's unhealthy narcissism, but there's a there's a range of narcissism that's within health, and higher levels of it are kind of required. Both narcissism, doing and, shit like both narcissism yeah. and ego have got a bad rap and they both are necessary for massive ex- success. You've got to have an ego. You've got to have some level of narcissism to to be... Otherwise, you're like, who am I to go up there you don't, and tell you people yeah. You've got to have that. And, there, and there's a healthy dose of it and then there's then there's not. It's 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 got a bad rap, this idea that... I mean, I just got in this debate with my... My brother-in-law t- talking about a, a kid who's oh he's got this ego and so that. why does everyone just think because you have an ego it's bad like everybody has one you can have a healthy one you can yeah. have a strong ego and confident in yourself and believe self belief and you have to have a little bit of narcissism to b- believe that you can beat the odds so I mean there's, right. there's who the hell would start a best a business nobody would if you didn't have that no look at the odds yeah. you, if you just did the numbers you'd be like this is not yeah. a good thing. AI yeah. would say don't do it yeah <laughs> everybody <laughs> would say don't do it it's like right. this is this is a lo- I'm a lo- Lose hundred percent. Right, right, right. Anyway, speaking of uh, narcissism, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> you are the master of transition. I so. love it. Yeah. No, we got another live event. The whole COVID uh, strange. Another. Is this over. is the first yeah. in almost three years, and the first time that we're having it here. And yeah. it, we're gonna have it here at Mind Pump Media headquarters. At the headquarters. With, with the studio and our gym where we film and all that stuff, and I am excited to meet people live again and real, real life people real people you yeah. know why i was who's i talking to about this oh uh lewis house i was talking to lewis house about this mm-hmm. and he said do live events like are they profitable Such a name dropper yeah what's days. the deal yes. and Jeez. and oh god <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with my friend yeah <laughs> just you know <laughs> casually no, I don't have yeah. no and, yeah. and he's like do they are they really profitable I said, no they're 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 not super profitable i said but the the value <laughs> super they're not profitable they're not profitable at all. At all. i think we had one that we actually didn't yeah. lose money i know yeah. and i said the, the reality is the the reason why we do it is it keeps us like grounded yeah, because yeah. you know, when, when, when I used to train people, one thing I used to like about it was it kept my finger on the pulse of what's going on and you know, how to communicate certain things, what works, what doesn't work. What I, what I don't like about what we do here is I'm talking to, you know, out to the camera, to the microphone. And I don't necessarily see on a day-to-day basis how it's really impacting people what's working and what's not working. Yeah. And so I feel like I could float off the ground a little bit and lose that grounded, you know, kind of what makes us effective. So when we meet people and we hear experiences and we talk to them and we say, it really drives us differently. So that's why we're, that's why we're doing well, this. this is, and I'm excited because we haven't done um, one in yeah, three years. For sure. I love these live events. I've always have, dude. It's yeah. great to meet people in person. It's just a totally different experience. Well, and we we are doing a VIP experience like we never have before. That, I mean, that's going to be first of all, we have a guest. We'll have Max there, so the audience, Max Lugavere. Will, yeah, get to hang out with Max. If you're the if you do if you're one of the ten people that get the VIP experience, you get three private experiences with us and Max, which I think is really cool. The one you can see the live recording. Then you get to uh, go to the um, Christmas uh, party, Christmas party with all of us, and then the fireside chat. So to do these three cool kind of intimate things. I mean, coming into our, our personal company party and letting outside people do that. That's not, we've never done that. The fireside chat came from what Sal and I did out when NCI, we had such a huge turnout from that. Everybody loved that experience. So building that into this will be cool. That will probably be, if you're listening to this right now, that will probably be close to selling out or did or already sold out. So it's gotta be, if you're interested in that, I would. where do they go for this? Do we know what the site is to get signed up? Yeah. It's mindpumplive.com. Oh, that's it. Mindpumplive.com. And you get, you get set up and then we can meet you and, and hang out. It'd be a good time. Look, high quality ingredients, convenience, great tasting, Organifi's superfood blends, make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety and nutrition to your day. Organifi has great products, One of my favorites is their green juice. Great way to start the day, but they have many, many other products. Go check them out. Head over to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Gage from Oregon. Gage, what's happening? How can we help you? All right, guys. So um, my fitness journey started about 2016. I was 260 pounds and then I kind of needed to lose some weight because I'm 5'10". And uh, I uh, 
did it the wrong way. I kind of starved myself and got all the way down to about 165 pounds. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, wasn't too good. And I got back into lifting weights about 18 months after that. And I'm currently doing MAPS, I think it's Powerlift. But I just finished MAPS Performance. And I'm kind of looking at a direction to go. I'm currently eating about 3,500 calories, anywhere from 35 to 300 calories a day. And I, I kind of plateaued. I'm wondering which way I should go. Okay. So there's, there's so many different factors that could be affecting a, a plateau in progress. Um, so sleep is one of them. Um, so how, how is your sleep? Is it consistent? Is it good? Are you getting eight hours a night? Yes, sir. So I usually work out at about 445. So I go to bed around 830. Okay. So try and get it eight, as many as much sleep as I can. Okay. So sleep would be one. Sounds like that's good. Uh, then there's life stressors. There's also um, protein intake. You could be 3,500 calories, not enough protein. And then lastly, I think you know you might need to change up the workout programming a little bit. Um, oftentimes, okay. yeah, it, you know, sometimes you'll progress only for so long and then you really need to change up the workout programming. Now, before you did power lift, what kind of program did you do? I ran performance. Mass performance. And then before that? Um, anabolic. Anabolic. I'm going to have you do map symmetry. I think symmetry. map, yeah, okay. map symmetry is different. It's very different. Lots of unilateral work. And it may expose some of the reasons why some of your lifts aren't going up. Your bilateral lifts aren't going up. Like in your question, it says your bench press. You also mentioned in here that you feel like you're just gaining too much body fat. Yeah. Yeah, just I don't feel comfortable in my own skin, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Well, you could definitely drop the calories. I, I'd bring them down by maybe 300 or so. So, you know, maybe to 3,100, okay. follow map symmetry, and then kind of see what happens, see see how it feels. But sometimes that's all it takes, right? Because if you look at everything down the list and everything else looks good, then just a change in programming. And sometimes you need to make a really big change in programming, you know, like a different okay. style of training. And map symmetry is, is very different. It's, uh, you know, uh, there's a there's a short phase of isometrics and then lots of unilateral work and then it finishes up with kind of this five by five strength phase in which case you you'll probably see some strength strength gains there. I feel like I'd okay. want to I want to dive in a little bit with your relationship with food. Um, I I know I know very little about you right now, but I, if you were a client of mine, I would, I'd want to ask more questions around. Uh, the reason why you did a, a dramatic cut like that, where you just bas basically you starved your body for uh, it sounds like well, almost a year or whatever it was to gain to drop almost a hundred pounds. Uh, and then well, um, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Tell me. Go ahead. Um, so I was I was a senior in high school at the time, and I was going into college, and well, I think I I, I was I wanted to get a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. girls make us do shit, don't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you I mean, and, so, yeah, and so you cut calories really really low for an extended period of time lost 100 pounds and then since then have been obviously introducing more calories because 3400 calories is a, is a decent place to be at but what i'd be worried about is that you were so used to being low calorie for so long that just simply being in a little bit of a surplus and having a little bit of water weight the next day or being filled up with carbs gives you this feeling of, oh my God, I'm getting fat and I'm so afraid to go back to that 260 pound guy. And so then you go back the other direction and you cut calories and you go right. do this up back and forth thing when you just started to probably fuel your, fuel your body good to support something like MAPS power lift to get stronger, to build more muscle. But then the psychological part starts fucking with you because you're like, oh my God, right. I don't want to get fat again. So I got to, I got to reduce calories again. So you're not really actually in this this consistent surplus to build strength. So I, I, I would, I would want to know more around that. And does that speak to you at all? And, and what do you have to say to that? Yeah, I think, I think you're probably right. I do have a bad relationship with food considering, you know, I starved myself for however long, 18 months and just trying to get that body fat off. But yeah, I probably need to do some reflection on that. Where, where are you at right now? Weight wise? Uh, Currently, like 190, 195, so it's been coming back on. Yeah, 190, um, I think at 5'10"? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's, on not, a good day. that's not bad. I mean, if you do cut your calories, a small cut would be would be fine. You know, two, 300 calories okay, okay. would be okay because you're already okay. at 3,400 calories. Um, but mm -hmm. a, a change in workout programming, I think, will make a, a, a big difference for you. Okay. Sounds good. Symmetry. I'll, I'll look into it. No, no, no. We're going to send it to you. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, you're talking to us. Yeah, <laughs> we're giving we're going to give it to you for free. It's like Santa Claus. Yeah, everybody else you got to buy, right. it, but you get it for free, Gage. Yeah. Did you get a girlfriend by the All way? Right. Did it, did it work? Did you get I, a girlfriend? I'm married. <laughs> oh, hey, it holy worked. Cow. Well, you know, you skipped a step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> I also uh, just real quick. So I have two jobs. I work on a farm, and then I also work for a commercial spraying applicator. So I'm always outdoors, you know, working with my hands, moving around a bunch. I, it, maybe I'm doing too much volume. Could that possibly be a part of it? Oh, I mean, maybe. How long have you been doing that for? <sighs> Five years. Yeah, you know. So here's the interesting thing about people who work uh, in manual uh, type labor, or work physic with physical jobs. After a certain amount of years, the body adapts pretty well. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I come from a family of, of blue collar workers. And it's, it always shocks me at their body's ability to just handle workload. Um, so it's usually after five to 10 years where it's not, I mean, it's, it's still somewhat of a stress just because you're moving and it's work, but it's more like a normal stress, you mm -hmm. know, for that person. Like, like somebody is sitting at a desk and getting stressed out at work versus just a, it's being a lot of like, do you, does your job make you sore? Do you get sore from your job anymore? No, sir. Yeah, yeah, so I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Yeah, honestly, I feel like Adam was in a, in the right direction there. Just knowing a lot of athletes I've trained before that have been on a cut for a very long period of time trying to manage their weight, and it just was not contributing to their performance at all. So being well-fed is is definitely a part of that process to – um, you know, get the kind of gains and, and, and progress forward. Like I think you're looking for. So I think, you know, looking into that and, you know, messing around maybe with some, you know, mini bulks, mini cuts and, and kind of making sure that you're fed through a uh, part of the training process is going to contribute a lot. It sounds counterintuitive, but I'm, I'm with Justin and I know Sal was talking to you about doing a little bit of a cut, but I would, I would speak. I'm speculating that you probably haven't been on like a bulk since you did this massive cut. And I would imagine that anytime you creep up on calories, you probably psychologically fuck yourself and go back the other direction. And so yeah. your body might just do really well being fed a little bit more calories and just trying to get fucking strong for a little bit. And have, have you ran yeah. a bulk? When was, the, have, when was the last time you actually ran a bulk? I, I don't think I ever actually have. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I, I, and again, it, it's going to be the psychological part. If uh, it would be add a little bit of calories, try and get strong in the gym. And that's your, your main thing you're focused on. Don't sweat a couple pounds here and there. If you're, if you're getting stronger in the gym and you're feeling mm -hmm. good, uh, I, that would be where I'd try and focus. Build that muscle, man. You know, Gage, how do you know you're consuming 3,400 calories a day, by the way? Do you track? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. I use uh, Lose It, that little, little app. Okay, well that's good. By the way, thirty four hundred calories is not bad uh, for for a guy your size. Yeah. Uh, that's not that's, that's not, not a bad. Terrible, yeah, yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty good. So I mean, you can even make okay. you, if you're scared of adding calories, you can even just keep them where they're at and follow map symmetry, and then you know make sure you feed your body appropriately as you start to get stronger. Okay. Yeah. So should I run the cut during symmetry? You know, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, why don't you keep your calories where they're at at first? And see how you feel. Okay. Because I, I do agree, a cut, a small cut would be fine, but I wouldn't do it for too long, you know, like a few weeks and then go back to maintenance or back to a little bit of above. I mean, your body weight and your height, um, I, I think you're, you're, you're fine. And your calories are high enough to where a cut, it's not making me freak out. Like if you're at 2,400 calories or 2,000 calories, I wouldn't want you to go on a cut. But 3,400, you have some room to play. So, so it's okay to go on a little bit of a cut, um, but it's also okay to stay at maintenance and then follow a new program. Uh, because that that'll fuel the the strength that you're looking for. Gage, one last question before we hang up and I talk about you. Um, your steps, have you ever tracked them in the day? Yes, sir. It's usually about fifteen thousand, anywhere from fifteen to seventeen thousand steps. Yeah, he's moving yeah, a lot. Very he's active. moving a lot, bro. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you one hundred percent. Yeah, you could hundred percent handle a bulk right now. Yeah, that's. I would. I would okay. push that way. I would push you in the bulk direction. I, and well, and like, like right. 3,600 calories, or something like that. It's yeah, like a small, maybe even just a little bulk. Yeah, even 38, dude. 38 and trying to get strong. I mean, I, I, I think, right. yeah, I really think you're, you're not, let's put it this way. You're uh, adding to going to 3,800 calories. 
you are not going to be putting pounds of fat on every no, single no, week. I no. promise you that. I Especially guarantee with that. new programming. That's right. And but but you will. You're increasing calories. Mo most likely some carbohydrates. Might be thirsty. You might hold a little bit of water weight here and there. Don't let that fuck yes. with you. Focus on the strength in the gym. Get strong at the lifts that you're your whatever program you're following. Get strong, and just hang hang tight for give me a month. Give me a month of training like that, and then you then and call us back and we can talk about where okay. you're. At. Or actually, you know what? Let's do this. Doug, put them in the forum. You have you have Facebook? Um, no. You don't got Facebook out in that cornfield. Huh? Just no? when I thought I could. Yeah. Now I like him. Right. Right. No, I tell you guy. what, reach back, to, reach back to us then in a month. Send and, an email to yeah. To, to send, send an email to Jerry again. Just let her let her know that we asked you to to reach back out in a month and let us know how you're doing, and then we'll talk again. I just I uh, I just think if you trust the process a little bit here, it'll serve you well. Thanks, Gage. Have a good one. You got it, man. Yeah, that's uh, you know, two things. One, uh, I mean, good, very good point you made there, uh, Adam. Just kind of you know talking about the relationship with food, and then two, with you know that being physically active the way he is after a while, it really is remarkable how the body adop adapts mm -hmm. to that kind of workload. It's the new standard, yeah. So I, I mean, he is moving a lot, which is good for his health. But at some point, it's not like you're burning shit tons of calories like you were when you first started. And so I want to say that to some people because I think some people might think he's not. But I wouldn't have given that advice if he told me he's right. two to four thousand steps a day, right? Right. Because right, right. that's a pretty high calories for somebody who's right. doing only two to four thousand right, steps a day. Right. Uh, and yeah, and it that, makes a difference. But yeah, fifteen thousand is no joke. He's moving all day. Yeah, I mean, that's that's trainer. Active. That was like being a yeah. full time trainer type movement for me was fifteen thousand yeah. steps a day. So he's an active dude. Doesn't and you're right. Your body adapts. It's not like he he might have been burning five thousand calories when he first got the job yeah. there, for, but then he's he's now adapted to this. But I definitely think that psychologically, this person who's lost a hundred pounds, right, driven by well, they're gonna be want, they're gonna be fearful of every pound, very fearful, yeah. Yeah. and very and and I, about and, it. and I bet what happens is you hear the show every once in a while. Oh, I'm gonna increase my calories a little bit. The next day you wake up and you feel thicker. Or the scale goes yeah. up. Oh my god, I go back the other yeah, way. Yeah. So because he said he weighs three thousand to thirty four hundred, three thousand. I bet I bet he tries to creep up to thirty four. Like, yeah, yeah, freaks out, goes back down, and then he's yeah. wondering why he's plateaued in the gym. Well, he's not feeling his body to sure. grow and build. Next caller is Jake from Minnesota. Jake, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, man? Good. All right. So a little background on my question. I'm 27 years old, and I have been lifting for about a decade, uh, kind of on and off in two to three year stretches. And each time I've kind of taken a break from lifting, it's been because I have a really hard time gaining any significant strength or size. Um, I'm about as strong now as I was when I started lifting when I was 17 years old. Um, and I feel like I'm doing most things right. So, you know, I'm tracking my calories and protein intake. Um, I'm sleeping seven, eight hours a night. Uh, I've tried lots of different kind of methods for working out. So I've done strength focused, uh, kind of five by five, uh, plans. I've done bodybuilding focused plans. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different kind of splits. So like push pull legs. And right now I'm doing uh, full body three days a week. Um, but all of it kind of yields the same results, which is not very much. So just looking for your guys's, um, you know, opinions or suggestions on what I can do to kind of get over this hurdle. Did I, did I hear that correctly? Did you say that you've been lifting for a decade and you're the same strength as you were back when you were 17, when you first started? Yeah, roughly. So probably, you know, a year into lifting, I'm about the same. So, wow. you know, I started when I was 17, six months to 12 months in, I'm about as strong, you know, uh, now as I was then. Yeah. I'd Keep be pissed. I'd, maths program. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. Yeah. I'll, you know, um, have you followed any of our maps programs? I haven't. No, I'm a relatively new listener, but oh, I'm okay. looking at um, aesthetic potentially. No, no. Um, anabolic. Anabolic. Yeah. anabolic. Yeah, I'll send you maps anabolic, and I want you to follow the two foundational workouts a uh, a week uh, side of that. What kind of intensity are you training with when you lift? Yeah, I feel like uh, before I found you guys, uh, there were times where I was training definitely too hard. Uh, sore for days afterwards. Now I've switched it up and I'm, you know, training still pretty intensely, but not to the point where I'm sore for days. You know, I'm going into my lifts feeling, you know, refreshed and 
uh, recharged. So, okay. Are you more, um, circuit training kind of style based or like more strength training based? You said five by five. Oh, you said five by five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've that. done, I've done, I've done, um, strength focused. Yeah. Five by five stuff and kind of bodybuilding focus, you know, feel the muscle and, you know, slow it down, that kind of stuff, but all kind of yielding the same results. Yeah, yeah. So, so sometimes I'll run into a, a, somebody like you where the, the volume, the intensity, uh, required to get the, their body to progress is much lower than the average person or put differently, a traditional amount of volume and intensity is too much for that person's body. And okay. so, so I think we're going to have to scale it back a little bit, which as I said, maps anabolic, two foundational workouts a week, do the, do one or two trigger sessions on the off days and really follow the way we explain to lift on there. So when you do a set, take it to like, you know, maybe three, two or three reps before failure, don't go to failure on your lifts, practice your lifts, practice your form and, um, and then see, and then see if your strength things, uh, tend to go up and, or that to, in relation to your food too. So I know I, I see on your question that you said that you, you, you eat high protein and stuff like that, which that would be like the first thing that I would ask is to make sure that you're, you're hitting protein intake, but even just being consistent too, with the diet, uh, eating what you need consistently and training. I don't, uh, how, what is, what is, you say you, and I understand why you would, you would stop for a while being frustrated after training hard and consistently. <laughs> how, how long is consistent for you? I mean, have you, have you strung like six plus months together? Do you normally go a couple months? Oh, yeah. like, okay. Okay. So you have, yeah, yeah, it's normally two to three years and then I'll take a break six months or something like that and get back into it. But, and are you, do you track calories? Have you done that before? Have you tracked macros? Mm -hmm. and see, like, what do you, so give me an idea yep. of what you, what you eat and, and, and like what your activity level looks like on a daily basis. Yeah. So my maintenance, I think is, you know, 24 to 26, just using some online, uh, calculators. Um, I've done anything from a couple hundred calories above maintenance, like three to 500 to some like pretty dirty bulks to see if I can, um, put on strength. Um, right now I've kind of shifted to really just focusing on the protein, um, doing about a gram per pound, um, per day. So that's about 165 grams for me right now. Um, outside of the gym, I work a desk job. So, you know, pretty sedentary, uh, getting up and doing walks throughout the day. But other than that, you know, it's, it's my workouts and those walks and otherwise I'm at a desk. So Jake, uh, have you ever had, you know, this is, there's a small chance this, this may be an issue, but, uh, nonetheless, um, have you had a hormone panel done to look at things like uh, testosterone, I've free testosterone? Yeah, just testosterone. I've never done any other tests okay. for. And do you, do you remember where you were at? I don't remember off the top of my head. I just remember uh, the. I, I used Everly Well, I think, and the test results came back and said normal, basically. Yeah. I would go, I would get a, a, a blood panel done just to check, just to see if testosterone, okay. free testosterone, and other hormones are where they need to be, um, especially if you're noticing any other signs of low testosterone, like low libido, mm -hmm. low energy, low confidence, motivation, um, that kind of stuff. Just to, just to, to take a look and see what's going on. Because if your free testosterone is lower than ideal, it's going to be hard to make gains on almost any type of training program. Mm -hmm. And that okay. sometimes is an issue. Now you're a young man, so that might not be the case, probably not. But at the very least, what you'll get is a baseline of where you're at when you're, you know, in your twenties. That way later on, if that ever does become an issue, you know where they were at the age you're at now. Okay. So one other thing with anabolic, uh, in terms of the active recovery piece, the trigger sessions in between is it, you know, that's one that we'd like to highlight a lot that people need to be consistent with that and try it a couple different times throughout the day, if possible with the rubber bands and just to, to keep stimulating uh, those muscles, but to, to promote more of that that recovery process. I don't know how good your sleep is, but obviously that's another factor, you know, going into this, but like to really just dial in the recovery process on, you know, in conjunction with that, yeah. uh, needs to be emphasized. Now the, the, the trigger sessions are low intensity, by the way. Yeah, so very, don't, don't treat them like workouts when you do do that. Very low. Uh, Jake, we're going to send you maps anabolic and then you can go to mphormones.com and, uh, talk to one of our, uh, the, you know, the people that we work with, uh, on doing like a hormone panel just to, just to see, kind of where you're at and if that's an issue or at the very least, like I said, get a baseline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It sounds great. Thank Th you. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thanks guys. Bye. You know, I've, I've had, it's not common, but I've had clients where the, the amount of volume 
that their body responds to, or should I say the amount of volume that is too much for them is way lower than the average person. I actually had a client once where he made gains on one day a week. Yeah. One day a week. And you know, he walked and stuff on the other days more than one day a week. And we did like mobility stuff, like more than that. And it's just like, it overtrained him, just overtrained yeah. him. And I just, I remember that because it took me so long to figure that out. Well, especially when the tendency is to just keep cranking more, yeah. you know, and, and that's the typical, right? Like, uh, you think that if, if nothing's progressing, you just have to keep piling on to that. Like when it, in some instances like this, if it's not working, like re reducing the, yeah. the overall volume will, yeah. will make a difference. Something doesn't smell right to me. Yeah. I yeah. know. Yeah, that's why. Well, that's why we're trying to troubleshoot. Yeah. This well, thing. he's gonna get. He's, he's gonna get one of our programs. Yeah. With all that. And yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Just. I mean, to, to be training for that long, uh, you know, and not see any gains, claiming that you, you're living in a surplus and hitting your protein. Well, that's case. why I said the hormone thing. I mean, he might have. He might be suffering some low, like low testosterone. Maybe, I mean, and he's got a desk job, so that, that there's some. There is a, a, a chance of that, but it just it doesn't add up to me. I feel like I want more. I want to know more information. I'd want to see what's going on a little bit. I mean, and he's running a five, five by five programming, yeah, which is legit running training 10 years, uh, eating, hitting protein, take living in doing surpluses, not stronger than what you were when you, are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. Like that's, and then not having, then and not having any hormone issues or any glaring, obvious things. Well, he didn't, he did one of those uh, at sleep, home. Sleep was said, he said sleep was good too, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, he didn't add I mean, home, he, he yeah, didn't he add home that, hormone tests, which the, 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 right, the error right. rate on that, just because of the user and whatever can be pretty high, and it's not really a standard, right? It's not the gold standard. So, but who knows? I, Jake, if you're listening to this, I'd love to hear back from you after a couple months of following with Maps Anabolic. Just let us know what happened. Our next caller is Jose from Colorado. Jose, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. You got it. Uh, great. Yeah. So, I'll just get started. So, a little bit of background. So, I've been weightlifting for uh, almost eight years now. Um, so, I consider myself definitely not beginner not by any means like super advanced but i've had my fair share of phases of just being uh, really addicted to weightlifting uh, about 6 1 about 220 um right now my goals are really just kind of just keeping my diet in check and cutting down some weight um i have a wedding in a few months that i'm looking to cut down to but um my question is really in terms to one of my lingering injuries so i was recently working through maps anabolic um and i had a lingering injury that came back um and I was hoping to try to treat it and, and really try to be more preventative about it coming back. So uh, I'm really big into squatting and deadlifting. Um, so I really just love like lower body, kind of like more of the compound movements. And for me, uh, the pain for me, it was actually kind of my hamstring. Um, and for a while, I thought it was that it was due to weak hamstrings. So I tried to treat it, you know, do some more focused um, items for hamstrings. And then upon like further research, I started looking into it and it seemed like it was a little bit more towards my hip adductor, almost like the gracilis muscle, like towards like the inner of my groin. Um, so I did a little bit more research on that, found a few videos online to try to strengthen that. Um, so I started doing some like wide stance squats, you know, trying to see if that might have been it. And what I found was when I was actually on the hip adductor machine, I was really weak and super unstable. So it was almost like really like really really lightweight was really almost like nearly embarrassing like i would start shaking and it was it was just not a good scene so uh my question for you guys is you know just from your experience does that sound like that's kind of like the the issue at hand and i know that might be a tough question to answer um and if so right what would you guys recommend in terms of building up that strength potentially going through like treatment and recovery and tr trying to prevent that down the line too well, yep. Jose, you're in luck. Justin is a crotch expert, <laughs> so in he's going to be able, than one. Yes, he's going to be able to help you out here. Uh, actually, map symmetry, I think, would be phenomenal for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's 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 really two ways to approach stuff like this, Jose. One is I I, I got to find the muscle involved. I have to find the specific area that's involved. And that can sometimes be a lot like you're a, a sleuth. Like you got to right. just like, it's a mystery and I got to figure it out. There's another sometimes way. Sometimes looking do. for the function. Is yeah. The way yeah. Go. There's yes. another way to do it, which is let me, let me expose the weakness through movement. And then let me get better mm. at movements where I can tell that there's an imbalance or there's a weakness. I like that better because it really doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know, when you do it that way. And also it's often a combination of things, right? It's often not just one weak muscle but often a, a movement pattern that becomes an issue. So so Adam hit the nail on the head. Map symmetry with its unilateral work, you're going to see, because I'm going to assume that the that the injury keeps happening on the same side. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah same mm -hmm. side. Yeah. yeah, it's like my left side every single time. But usually 
it comes up like it slowly like increases when I'm squatting. So I can feel like I can feel it like it's there. And then at some point it just like comes back. Full this, throttle. this is why we wrote this program. Yeah. Got to address that What's instability. That? This is why we wrote that program it was literally for right. someone okay. just like you trying to troubleshoot that. And how would we regress them back to, to get to the root cause of it? We'd run you through like a phase of isometrics and then go into unilateral work. And for sure, during that process, it's going to expose the weakness. Yeah. And, and, and so here's a tip. And we wrote this in the program, so you'll see this. But just to emphasize it, start with the side. When you do the unilateral work, start with the side that's weak. And then let that dictate the weight and reps for the stronger side. So don't don't use the strong side and say, okay, I gotta copy that with my weak side. Use the weak side. Whatever you do there, then do with the do the strong side because we we got to balance things out. You, you, you said you love squatting, you love deadlifting, yeah. really yeah. heavy bilateral work. You probably developed uh, some compensations and a bit of an imbalance mm -hmm. that isn't so obvious until you hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the unilateral stuff, it's going to become obvious. You're going to see when you do unilateral stuff on the left versus the right. Then you're like, oh my gosh, this feels way different, or I'm not as stable, or I don't have as much mobility, or whatever. And that'll correct itself as you continue to do the, the unilateral work. And then at the end of map symmetry is, is bilateral five by five work. Then you'll be able to see the fruits of your labor. You'll be able to see the, the, the results of training this way. And just addressing the hip function. I don't know if you've uh, spent any time doing 90 90s internal external rotation of the hips uh, and, and then increasing that, yeah, that internal tension. That's definitely going to be something on repeat. I, I would suggest mm -hmm. in conjunction with going through the program. Yeah, so we'll we'll send map symmetry yeah. over to you if you don't already have it, Jose. I so I actually ended up getting it a few weeks ago when you guys were running the sale on it. Oh, <laughs> um, but I'll yeah. definitely I, I'll, I'll get it started though. I actually have that in Maps Prime too. So Justin, to your point, I, I've uh, been going through Prime, and I think I'm going to start integrating that a little bit more into some of those sessions too. Oh, well, bro, if you're ever so around, cool. Doug will give you a hug since uh, we yeah. couldn't give you a program. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Sounds yeah. good. I'd He's love a, to lift with yeah. you guys. Really, Thanks really for everything you guys do. Yeah. He gives great hugs. Yep. Thanks, Jose. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. You got it. I and I do want to say this to the just to the listener. Uh doing unilateral focused training for, you know, 4 weeks, 6 weeks, 8 weeks, like that's I feel all like you do. It's important for everybody to do that. You you'll see a lot, all kinds of stuff. You'll see all kinds of imbalances and differences and and it it tends to highlight in weaknesses and it allows you to strengthen movement patterns. So you don't necessarily need to isolate and find the root muscle or issue. Um, although that can be beneficial at times, but oftentimes just like, like, let's look at movement and then let's fix the movement. And then that ends up fixing the issue. Our next caller is David from New Hampshire. David, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to let me get on here and ask my question. Just got to say um, off the bat, uh, you guys have been a major part of my life for the past few weeks since my son's been born. He's sleeping right down here, so I'm going to talk and hopefully he stays asleep. But uh, I've been working out in my garage ever since he's been born and I'm listening to your podcasts um, as I'm doing that. Um, and I find your content so relatable and inspiring. Um, when I first tried to get in touch with you guys, I emailed the wrong email address, but someone named Ann sent me some links that were useful for new parents. And I got to say, Sal, the thing you said about setting an example and being the man that you want your son to become, that just clicked with me like so powerfully. So that was great. And I'm just really grateful to you guys for giving me this opportunity. So yeah, those are my questions. New dad. I've been working out since I was uh, 15 years old, just kind of basic bro splits and bodybuilding type stuff. Uh, so my son was born um, September 27th and on September 30th, I turned 33. So I'm just looking for a recommendation for a program to maintain muscle math, mass, uh, maybe get leaner if possible, um, but also taking into account the time constraints and the lack of sleep. So that's my first question. And second part is, what have you guys felt when you first have your child around? Because I felt like an immense drop in my testosterone. And I did send you guys that study to see what you think of it. Like, is there anything valid with that? And is it even worth trying to fight it? Yeah, let's we brought this up. I let's believe. start with that. So yeah. there were studies that showed that new fathers um, had a drop in testosterone uh, for a short period of time. And the theory was that it's an evolutionary thing that it's it's preventing the man from trying to seek out new mates, right? To stick around, to be more parental. Now, here's why I think that's bullshit. It's bullshit because <laughs> low testosterone makes men irritable. It causes our moods to drop and we're less likely to be 
just good at whatever we're doing anyway. So what I think is happening is this. Let me ask you a question, David. How's your sleep been yeah, since, sleep your since your baby was born? It's everything. I mean, at most three, maybe four hours at a time. So severely lacking. And I, before I was at least eight hours yeah. a night. So and I you, know that has to do with T levels. That's why the testosterone, yeah. that's why they see no new dad's testosterone levels drop. I, th I think it's, it's hilarious that they try to equate it to somehow low testosterone making men better fathers. It's, the, it's not true at all. Low testosterone makes you feel like shit, makes everything much harder. Higher, you know, yeah. good, healthy testosterone levels makes you feel good, confident. Uh, and more likely to make you somebody that you want to hang around with. Okay. So what's, what's happened is you just, you're sleeping like shit. And so because of that, testosterone levels tend to drop. The other thing is this, and this is just, look, here's the deal. When you're a young man and you don't have kids, you're pretty invincible. And what I mean by that is, you, you know, you're, you, you got your fears and whatever, but you're, really nothing scares you. You don't, you know, no, nothing can mess with you. And then all of a sudden you have this baby and you love them more than anything. And now all of a sudden, holy shit, like I'm vulnerable. Like this baby is, not, is, is this, this, like my heart is living outside my body now. And you feel yeah. all kinds of emotions. Like you're a young man, nothing bothers you. Then I remember when my first son was, I don't remember how old he was. He was like, he's like eight months, nine months old. We're sitting on the couch watch, watching Finding Nemo. And that's when the, <laughs> the, the dad fish loses the, you know, the, the son fish and he's swimming after him. And I find myself Eddie. tearing up. I'm like what the hell's wrong? Yeah. With me? Why am I <laughs> why am I crying over this cartoon? <laughs> because I kind of understood, like at that moment. So those feelings are all totally normal. But let's let's go back to the exercise part. Um, I wouldn't focus on building muscle or trying to get shredded right now with three four hours of sleep in a newborn. Really, what you want to do is you want to look at um, how can how can I work out in a way that'll help me uh, live my life better. Okay, <laughs> so what it's probably going to look like are short daily workouts that help your mental state, that help your mobility, that just help you kind of right now deal with the stresses of having your first kid. Um, I think MAPS 15 is perfect. I think MAPS 15 is absolutely perfect for you. 15 more minute workout a day, and then focus on trying to get sleep when you can, focus on trying to eat healthy, and you just kind of you know, you got to roll with the punches for a little while until it's like after that first year, then things start to settle back down. You, you are literally uh, one of the main avatars that we were thinking about when we created that program. And this is, oh, cool. this is how, this is how I've been training it for the last three months. So, and, and it's mainly because my focus is elsewhere right now. And I'm not, I'm not really trying to build a ton of muscle, build a ton of strength. I'm just trying to maintain, I've worked really hard to build muscle over my two decades of training. It's really just to maintain, be a better father, be, be better at running my company, be better at my, be better partners, be better friends, be a better son. Like that's kind of where my mind is at right now in my life. And so I, I want to do as minimal possible in the gym to maintain a healthy physique. And that's where this program came from. So it's like literally perfect for you. Yeah. I think, I think that'll be a good one for you and you can do it at home and you know, you find 15 minutes, do a few exercises and just keep yourself healthy and feeling good while you're going through this, you know, especially the first three months. The first three months is like yeah. a blur. I mean, it's totally six. like, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, well, it depends on the kid. But the yeah. first three months is the worst. Then, then the next three months are hard too, and it gets a little easier. And it's, it's usually after a year. So you got yeah. some, you got, you got some time, bro. One year mark, bro. One, <laughs> one year is the mark. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got some time, go. Here. All right, and you found because I guess that's a more realistic goal. If I'm going to be real with myself, is the, a goal would be to not lose whatever progress I have oh, made over yeah, the years. Right. You found that just with those 15 minutes a day, you're able to at least maintain that baseline. I mean, there's a lot of factors at play here, right? Diet, sleep, you know, stress, but all things being equal, the there's actually pretty good studies on this and they show that something like one ninth the volume that it took mm -hmm. you to build your physique is what's required to keep it. So wow. it, it, it's not, not a lot is required to maintain strength and muscle. Now you'll lose stamina, you'll lose, um, your work capacity. You know, in other words, if you go down to one ninth of volume, you, you might not lose strength and muscle, but if you bump it back up, you'll get sore again. You won't have the same endurance and stamina, but as far as strength and muscle is concerned, it sticks around with a pretty low amount of volume. And the longer you've had that muscle, uh, the, 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 the easier it is to kind of keep, like I, I find now that it's really easy for me to maintain a certain amount of muscle on my body versus when I was oh when it's, I was it is way harder to get it than it is to maintain it it's it's much easier to maintain it uh, after you've been trained that long yeah. and so uh, and, I, and and the the things that'll balance out like you already hit it on the head with your sleep like 
uh, you, my my workouts now are to optimize the other aspects of my life. That's the way I look at my workouts. I'm not like, and I've been in the place where like I'm training to to get a physique, to get strong, to do certain things. Where now it's like I lift to be a better version of all those things that I said before. That's the main reason why. And if that's the case, and I'm doing it on minimal or limited sleep because I'm a new father, then I don't want to like crush myself inside the gym. That's not going to serve me. It's just going to make me more exhausted, more tired. It's going to kick up the cravings then, and that's just going to make my my balance, my my ability to balance my nutrition and exercise and being a father even more difficult. Yeah. You know what's really cool, uh, David? This is kind of fun. Um, you know, well, your baby's kind of young still, but you get one of those like little bouncers. Uh, I know Bjorn makes a really good one for young young babies, and you put him in there, and then you do the exercises while he kind of sits there and watches. And I don't know how much they absorb. You know, five months, six months. But I found that real cool. Like you know, that my my little my little kid gets to see me working out, and then it kind of becomes a part of you know, of, of their life and it kind of normalizes. And I don't know, I feel like a superhero when I get to do that. So you may try. Yeah. That. And then subliminally when they're older, they're like, I don't know why, but I really want to lift weight. That's what I'm trying. I mean, yeah. I, that's what I'm trying. I know, I know Adam does that with basketball. He's, a, he's always doing <laughs> yeah. basketball stuff around his kid. It hasn't worked yet, right? Yeah, it, it, might. it hasn't some yet, of those little yeah. dumbbell rattlers. I'm not giving up though. <laughs> you know? I'm not giving up yet. <laughs> yeah. So we'll send you mass 15. Okay. That's so kind of you guys. I'm so thankful to you and just really appreciate everything you're doing again. So thank you so much, you guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and congratulations, man. Yep. yep. Thanks, Enjoy David. It. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You know, I swear to God, I, I feel like they're they're purposely and here's here's you know, put on your your whatever hat you want to put on. I swear to God, I feel like they're purposely trying to prevent God like men from just having kids. Yeah. Lowers your testosterone. It's not as fun. It yeah. sucks. You're not going to do this. That's like, come on, everybody yeah. calm down. Yeah. Like <laughs> if you don't get no sleep, you lower your testosterone. Yeah. It has nothing to do with being you a can't dad. can't go to Vegas anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's the noise yeah. of shit. Yeah. I mean, he's actually you know? in a great, I mean, great position. Guy's been training for, what do you say? Like 10 years plus or yeah. whatever like that he's been training for. He's at 12 to 15% body fat, 185. Yeah. I mean, this is the time. This is the time you scale back, dude. You're, yeah. plus, plus, at some point, you'll, he'll be able to get back to it. You know, it's just thing, right now. Dude. This is the period of time where you're not able to go after it. It's just the way it is. Just how it is. Look, if you like our show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.